Right, guys, so we are back in the studio for episode two of the Stokeman podcast. And today's guest is somebody that helped myself and Luke inspire a lot of change into our life and Mr. Documentary himself, Jordan Mulligan. Hello, my friend. The mean man. <laughs> Am I allowed to talk now? Yeah. Sorry, I did. Yeah, you <laughs> that came in awkwardly. Sorry. No, you're not allowed to talk. Stop talking. <laughs> We've known you for almost a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of years. Um, to, yeah. Jordan, I just was watching the the document, not the documentary, the interviews that we did mm. when you first came up. And they were the first interviews, weren't they? One about they're separate ones, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Autism mm-hmm. and stuff. And mm. Yeah, it was really good. Um, and like we'd watched some of your stuff previously quite a lot of it when I when I worked offshore I actually watched quite a lot of your stuff which was which got me through a lot of early morning workouts and stuff yeah it's mad to, to think that now we're doing a documentary we're going to talk a lot about the documentary yeah, and stuff yeah it is crazy like. um, yeah it's crazy how we all met as well like I said like I said they obviously came up just to do this yeah brief, uh film pieces motivational pieces and then it started turning into a documentary you had the idea you said our story would be good mm. and yeah, it was pretty crazy how it all just went 100 yeah. miles per hour. We were talking it? to Kush about it this morning, actually, and uh, it was funny, like, w- when we was coming up here, one of the biggest things was we was thinking is, like, we need to pitch the doc to them. Really? Was, like, yeah, we need to pitch that. And then we had breakfast after we'd done the, mm. oh, yeah, yeah. the Mulligan Brothers piece, and I think you guys just... I, I, don't, I don't think we'd spoke about a documentary. I think you guys would have said, I was like, what are you trying to achieve this next year? Mm. Or the next couple of years, and you both said what you were trying to achieve. And I was like, right, okay, we've got to do a documentary, yeah. and it, yeah, and here stuck, we are. And you stuck to your promise as well. So yeah. it's, like, it's all good, yeah. It's going to be awesome. You stuck to your promise as well, yeah. <laughs> making well, it. Well, you so. can't get rid of us at the moment, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but obviously, you know, your career, I guess, and your inspired change started when you started doing the the YouTube stuff. You know, you mm. got your videos together, but then cut when you were younger. This is what I find quite interesting, is because when you meet successful people, like I think about back to when they were younger and like, did you have that dream? Did you have an interest in like that type of agenda that you've got, you know, to inspire change or did you, were you just a normal kid? Like I think of yeah. like Elon Musk, what he was like as a kid. Mm. Was he a smart guy? Was he, I don't know. It's just interesting. Yeah, I mean, with so it's Mulligan brothers and sisters, N- Neve and Erin yes, as well. Course, it's like course. we're a big family, so there's seven of us. So there was like extreme competitiveness right. throughout the whole whole childhood. Like, it, and it was it was bad. You know, I mean, you guys will know yeah, like yeah, as brothers. Yeah. Like, so we were fighting in a good, it like bit competitive way. Mm. Um, you know, there was always like a basketball hoop that we'd be playing out for hours and hours trying to beat each other or right. we'd slip the blo- boxing gloves on and spar each other and stuff. So it was quite competitive. Um, and I think all of us, for some reason, I don't know what it was, but we just wanted to be successful. Mm. Like it was an absolute goal of ours. We are, we had a good childhood, but not fi- financially, we didn't have any money. Mm. And mm. Uh, my mum raised us by herself and uh, in Nottingham council estate, right. nice, nice this area, but it was like, we didn't have much. And I think because of that, we wanted to have something outside of that situation. Right. So we always wanted to try and step it up. I remember we always used to like talk about how big a house is going to be, what yeah, car we're yeah, going to yeah. be driving and like as kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we all kind of t- took our own path. So I started playing basketball competitively. We were all bodybuilding, you know, yeah. like the standard thing of like lifting weights, going to the gyms together. and. Wow. It was just a really, really competitive, and I would say nobody put limits on us for our dreams. Right. So I'd say to my mum, I remember um, writing a check, like Jim Carrey, I heard the Jim Carrey speech, so I wrote a check, $10 million, that mum's checkbook, <laughs> and she was laughing, like, well, I'm, you're not, you're not ch- cashing that in wow. <laughs> on my bank account, but she was like, she believed that I could do it, like right. 100%, so she supported all of us with our individual wow you know goals and aspirations that's mad we're yeah. fortunate man yeah that's um very cool you know, to have a, have a mother like mm. a very strong woman like that in your life mm. i think that's it's not all about how you get raised but it helps you know if you've got that yeah that figurehead that's saying you know fulfill your dreams anything is possible yeah and she and she was like that all the time and and the thing is with my mum as well is she she slept on the sofa most of my childhood oh, to give us an extra bedroom in the house. Because wow. um, it's a three bedroom, so dividing the kids up like to make sure everyone had somewhere to sleep. So she slept on the sofa and she'd she'd go to bed the latest 
like 10, 11 o'clock, but she'd be waking up at like 4, 5 a.m. Right. So like now, like when I got up at five, it's like, that's what my mum's been doing for years. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a normal thing mm. to, see, to see that. Jeez. Um, and the work ethic she had is like, there was just no excuse for not trying to, mm. if we're going to try and do something to do it to the best of our abilities mm. and really, I don't know. I don't know if it was about making my mum proud at the time, mm. but it was, I think, almost like following in those footsteps of what she was doing mm. um, through looking, just looking after us as kids because we were pretty mental as yeah, well, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, of us, Jesus. yeah we, and we weren't quite, it wasn't seven quiet kids. Yeah, like it was yeah. seven really energetic, um, wow. I wouldn't say naughty, but mischievous kids. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, as yeah. kids should be, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just go out, have fun, yeah, doing yeah. some stuff, get in trouble. You know, that's the one get yeah. banged up whatever you know it's, yeah. it is what it is it's, but it's, it's a quite interesting thought because what you're saying about your mum you know she didn't stop you from dreaming didn't stop mm. you from you know if you wanted to do something then she'd encourage that and, and I guess like for me that's what you guys are doing now with your you know your motivation stuff you know it's it's telling people they can achieve that yeah. so it's it's almost like I, I put it back to mum as well when, when mum used to make us t-shirts she kind of painted the picture for you to get him to inspire other people she mm. inspired you guys so mm. yeah she might have, she probably was the one that inspired the change first yeah, yeah no, inspired it's true. you kids oh. and stuff well this is the whole the whole thing with inspire change like that simple message is that it, you could do it I think people think it's like I've got to win World's Strongest Man and then I can inspire people mm. Mm. and it's it's not the case like mm. I, I say the simplest example I give is going to a park and picking litter mm. and just go out to your local park pick some litter because I, I mean I there's a park across from the studio, our studio, and I would look out the window, there's a guy in the morning picking litter, and he's not, he doesn't work for the council, right. he does it in his spare time, walking his dog, he just picks litter. Oh. I remember seeing him and I'm thinking, if he's doing that, why wouldn't I clean up my local park? Or, and I did, so I started, oh. I bought, I got a pick, pick, uh, litter picker in the car, and I go pick litter every so often with oh. Jude, and, and it's like that simple action, and the bigger, I mean, your mom, my mom, mm. your dad, um, not my dad, but like people, especially in like a parental situation, mm. have the ability to inspire the kids. Mm. Um, you know, you have the ability to inspire your brother, or you, yeah, you know, yeah. it could be a close friend. It doesn't need to be a million people. Um, so yeah, my mum definitely inspired us, and then I, and then I had the realization when we started Mulligan Brothers, when we was really getting into the nuts and bolts of it, is that people don't have. Um, that they don't have that self belief, mm. but they d also don't have the ability to rent someone else's belief. So, like for me, mm. when I didn't have self belief, I could use my mum's yeah. belief. Mm. Mm. I could, you know, she would tell me that I could do these things. Mm. So it's like a rent in her belief until I believe myself. Right. Some people don't have somebody; they don't have the self belief, but they also don't have the ability to have someone else believe in them. Yeah. And I think it's just pr with the Inspire Change is trying to provide that for other people. Um, which, wow. yeah, I mean. Everyone can get inspiration in different ways, and Mulligan Brothers definitely isn't for everybody. Mm. But um, and that's why we do the documentaries now, and we do the the YouTube, and we do the different YouTube channels to try and mm. do it in loads of different ways. Yes. Yeah. Do you? But, ever, sorry. Okay, let's talk YouTube then, right? So when? How did? So you know, you all went into separate paths in life. Obviously, yeah. you know, you were a competitive basketballer. Everyone else went different ways. How did you all come together and start this kind of? YouTube channel as a whole and okay it's a long it's a long journey from basketball yeah. to thing. do you want me to try and fit it in or I mean yeah let's people want to know so let's do it. Yeah. Right, okay so I was playing basketball competitively oh. the goal was to be in the NBA like that was like my world's yeah, strongest yeah, yeah. man like this is where I want to get mm. to um, I genuinely believed I could right. and so I, I was training like eight hours a day like just whatever it was if I was uh, stretching uh, in the gym lifting mm. or do two or three basketball sessions a day as well and like I was like trying to master basketball but in hindsight I probably didn't have the ability but I, I, I was still pursuing that goal so that it was really good because my coach he was a bit of a hard nose and he created he was also like another person who like developed yeah, yeah. especially my mentality um, just like pushed me beyond what I was supposed to do and I yeah. kind I, I enjoyed being like taken to those limits um, and then that had multiple injuries and the worst worst of all was I broke my ankle uh, but like almost snapped the ankle Whoa. off like it was fully dislocated and the bone was like pushing through the skin it was really bad I was I was a big lad at the time but yeah. um, but anyway so I kind of stopped basketball mm. and it was all about being basketball wasn't 
it wasn't like that burning passion in me. Right. It was a goal that I really, really, really wanted to achieve. Like it was more the idea of success that mm. was mm. attractive to me. So I made the decision that I need to find something that I can put the same energy into that gives me a better chance of success. Mm. Um, I'd constantly battled with like knee injuries and stuff like that. So I like I decided to go into business. Um, so then I opened a. Oh, I wanted to open a women's gym. Don't ask me what, it was a bit of a random thing, but I wanted well, to, you to be honest. <laughs> you kept this a secret too. Oh, I think that's our next yeah. business or yeah. proposal. <laughs> so, Sorry, uh, I wanted to open a women's gym. Um, Naughty. So, uh, my my girlfriend, she ran a, she was a manager at a women's gym. So, mm. like, it, it, it made it, like, a bit more yeah. possible for me. Yeah. And I'd always wanted to own a business, like, bricks and mortar business. Right, so, okay. Uh, I was like inspired by a lot of these business guys at a young age. So I was doing that, but at the same time I was working as a labourer on the van. So I was, I was, it was like forty pound a day. I get picked up. It was like twelve hour shifts, really stupid kind of work for not much money. Um, but I, I never thought I was above that. So I was, I was happy working in those kind of environments. And um, just on that one, like we would go out in the morning and. I'd get in a van with a, with a guy, I won't say his name, but we used to get in a van with a guy, with a guy and we'd drive at like 6 a.m. to the local car wash and you could pick up um, immigrants who wanted to get work oh, and they'd get paid the same amount of money as me. So I was on the vans w- with these guys. And uh, so that, you know, like there was a, that was kind of the level of work I was at in my head. Like I, I thought like, this is what I'm capable of at the moment. Yeah. So like for me, I needed to make this massive jump from that to this. So I was doing that and I was also running eBay as well. So I had an eBay shop in, in the house. Oh, okay. So I was doing all these things together. Um, and then, and I was, I was quite ill from like the stress mm. it was causing and how much work I was putting right, in. Right, it was right. like, it was a lot. So, but it, it'd gone on for about three or four years. And then, um, and that the, the the part of the story where it all changed for me is my son died. So, so Tash was pregnant and um, it was, she was 36 weeks pregnant. So just about to deliver, right. um, you know, went for the baby scans. Jacob was absolutely <laughs> fine, just about ready to be delivered. And mm. then there wasn't much movement. We went back and he passed away. Mm. Um, so then he was born the next day and it just, changed my life like mm. completely changed everything and I remember it, it all happened so perfectly in terms of not Jacob dying but mm. in terms of finding what I wanted in life in, uh, for a career so Jacob died and had this business was really struggling with the business um, the women's gym was still working on the vans um, and still ran the eBay and I was like making ends meet with credit cards and everything like it was really like making sure people still had the jobs to do and then Jacob died. I was like, why am I doing this? Mm. Like there must be, there's gotta be something else out there for me that I can really input energy and help people. And that, w- that became quickly the thing is like, doing a women's gym that I'm not passionate about is not helping people like mm. in the way I want to help people. What I wanted was a Bentley. So mm. I was like running this gym to get a nice car. Mm. It wasn't a passion, I d- you know. Mm. So then when my brother Luke had had the YouTube channel for a couple of years and it was, it was doing well. It had like, at the time, like I think it was like 20,000 subscribers. Mm. It was, but that was a lot at the time. Mm. Like, you know, to have that many subscribers at the time was like a big deal. Um, and he came up to me and he'd been helping me do some leaflet dropping around the local area for my gym. And this, so just after Jacob died, he was like, do you, would you ever consider doing um, inspirational videos? And as kids, we'd loved filmmaking. Right. And it snapped straight away. I was like, 100%. And I, I we didn't, I, I don't know how we arranged it, but it was like, just make me a video and I'll upload it onto the channel. Whatever the channel, the video earns, you can have it, right. the, the revenue from it, and we'll just do it, we'll just go, do that going forward. Right. And I made a video and he was like, it's trash. I made another video, it was trash. I made another video, it was trash. <laughs> and he made another video, it was like, okay, I'll upload it. He uploaded it, I think it got like $70 or something. Uh-huh. And I was, I was like, if I make this many videos, I'd be paying for my wages and I was, I was he was like yeah he says you can do that I was like I, I quit so Jeez. I quit everything stopped work um, sold the business up um, got rid of all my eBay stock and I, and I went full time that month uh, so $75 the first month I think it was like $100 the next month and Tash was like this is the worst decision you've ever made like obviously it was a really bad time as well but I was loving it because I was getting these messages like this video helped me so it was enough Um, and then the third month like 
I discovered something with a YouTube algorithm and I said to Luke, like, we've got to do this. Like, mm. we need to create videos in this way. And he's like, okay, I'll give it a go. And like, nice. it fucking blew up. The whole channel blew up. And wow. then all the other channels popped off. And that was kind of the beginning of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long story to get there. But yeah, yeah that's, well, that's, that's how I got started itself, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Do you think like, you doing those videos was part of your... like? dealing with the grief 100% that helped you so in in two ways like the the videos really helped me uh, but I don't know if it's negative or positive but one of the biggest things is that I just became obsessed with being the best mm. like and and having just the sickest work ethic like it need like I d it needs to be like almost painful <clears throat> like I like I want to be so tired and d like hurt at the end of a day mm. that it doesn't allow that yeah. other pain to come out I know you've spoke about yeah. it with, with your mum as well mm. is that and it's like doing that almost like you're you're controlling the pain that's hurting you mm. so you can kind of, that because that that pain of losing mm. somebody is so it's ah it's horrible yeah, like yeah. To, to and to let that in and I, I do believe you have to let it in every so often and 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 feel it but mm. the pain of doing you know like for you guys working out and mm. like it's, it's painful but it's manageable it's mm. something that you can you control in yourself so like for me like working long hours and getting up early in the morning is really easy mm. in comparison to try and deal with grief yeah so like mm. I, and I still do it to this day like yeah. I still I'm still have this work ethic because I'm managing I'm still managing this pain like yeah. I'm still managing it but I see it as a positive now. Like I see, I see that it's, it's so that, yeah, there's the two ways. And then I'd, I'd listen to the videos and the messages and it helped me. That's class, so, Yeah, it was good. It helped me loads of people around the world as well, which is Appreciate a, a bonus. Yeah. It? And, it, and it came from your mum as well, you know, that work yeah. ethic, you know, mm. you know, it's because your mum's done it. It's also then, it's like a, uh, and okay, you know, it's it's okay to do that because you've seen your mum do yeah. that for so many years. But it's it's funny, my mum, my mum's first son was stillborn as well. Really? My mum went through the same thing. And wow. it's like, I spoke about it, like maybe it's a family curse. My mum's mum's first son was also a stillborn. Wow. So it's like th three generations of it, mm. of the first son. And it was, it was the first son in my, in my family as well. And uh, so she went through it. So like, I do think back now, like maybe that's why my mum had such a sickening work at work, yeah. think, you know, mm. like, similar sort of situation yeah. well the exact same situation definitely man you, when you go through that trauma you, mm. you do like initially I think you do so much to keep away from it yeah. just to lock it up don't you it's just it's just there and like you say you're going through you're doing anything you can you're getting up early you're going yeah. to bed late you don't want to have that alone time to even don't want yeah you don't want your mind to settle on it yeah. it's like now like I do like I'm, I'm I just I mean me and you talk quite a bit like mm. the grief's hit me quite bad recently mm. And it's been five or six years now. Mm. So, but uh, so, it, and I and I think now, like doing like uh, working with a, a psychologist and a therapist is mm. like I need to kind of embrace some of that feeling and that pain mm. um, to try and recover and mm. like let the. I think we we talk about it in therapy is like letting like release of the valve a little bit, mm -hmm. just so the pressure's not too much. Um, but yeah, I do I do see the other side of it as. A big win in mm. some ways. Like I, I don't, I wouldn't. There's a massive combination throughout my life to be like competitive and have that hard working ethic. But at 22 years old, losing my son, because like, you know, mm. early ages, like, it shaped my mind in, mm. in a way that's just never gonna go back anymore. Mm. So, uh, and I think with grief, especially, people have you have. There's two ways I, th I think people go through it and it's like you become, you can become a victim to it, mm -hmm. and it can really damage who you are. And and you know it's sort of like losing someone's just such a horrible thing um but if you can get past it and get onto the other side there's mm. just such massive growth from that in your character uh that it's not like a silver line it's really hard to talk about because people are like oh you just don't want to lose somebody mm. but it is it is such a and it can be great for the world mm, as well and I help definitely. a lot of other people yeah because without you know your son unfortunately yeah. dying you know you wouldn't have then gone no, on to true. do what you've done yeah and you would be sitting people. here and yeah. having yeah, a YouTube I see, channel I see it that way there. yeah I do see it that way Probably. and, I, and for, I, I say that with Jacob is like it has to he, his death it can't be in vain yeah, like it has to mean something so like the next right now the biggest one and it's like this this could kill me this could try to do this but it's like I want to get the BAFTA mm. you know I want to hold that BAFTA on stage and it's it's for him yeah, like yeah, it, it's yeah. it's Similar how you made the promise, Tom, like mm. for me, like I've made a, 
a promise with Jacob, but or, or almost a promise with myself that his name, he, he, him, and his name and, mm. and his death will not be in vain. Like it will, mm. you know. I want to move. It doesn't do anything, but I want to move the world for him. Like yeah. if I can, I want to ch change the world if if possible, so that it wasn't in vain. Yeah, it's mad thinking like going from you know being the forty pound a day in the in the van, yeah, to holding the bath, and, you know, because of Jacob, because of y yeah, that's your inspiration. Yeah. You know, that's. Jake would inspire you changing yourself mm. to amount to what you are now. And yeah, that's the go yeah. I'd look yeah, I'd not thought of it like that, but like yeah, it is. Like, without Jacob dying, there's I wouldn't uh, I definitely wouldn't have made that progress. Mm. Oh, and I on forty pounds a day on the vans, I remember I sat on those vans and I was like I had the inspiration, the motivation. I'd listened to motivational videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to be something so yeah. badly and I was trying. Mm. But there just so, something wasn't clicking. I remember thinking to myself, and a lot of people must feel like this: is like, is this it? Mm. Like, is this is this it? Mm. And I don't think you don't need to go through trauma to be able to push through, but you've got to put yourself in some sort of tough situation. Yeah. Um, Hundred percent. Yeah. And then, so you were chatting a little bit about like when you were younger, it was like a ten thousand pound or ten million pound check. You wanted a baby. Yeah. You wanted all this. Yeah. Like. I don't mean that a bad way, like material things, you yeah, know, yeah, money yeah, yeah. and everything else like that. But now, like the first time I think when when we met you, you turned up like old pair of jogging boots, yeah, like yeah. dirty shoes. And <laughs> there was nothing materialistic about you. Yeah, a real filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's why we get on so well yeah. because yeah. we're both that way. Like, yeah, it's nice to have nice things, but I think your mindset's changed now as well. It's not. Yeah. Okay, it's nice to have whatever, but that's not your passion I no so yeah so this is the difference is now the passion is to be the best filmmaker in the world mm, like mm. I, I that's that is my goal yeah um and i'm to, in in doing that like i want to inspire change so if i if i if i was aiming towards a car when i get a car it's you fall from great heights i've done i've done this myself mm. I've, I've bought my dream car I've sat. I've, I've dr drove the dream, the the Tesla outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I drove that home, that's my dream car. When I drove that home, I thought, "What have I done? Like, why have I done this?" <laughs> and it's like I, I convinced myself, and I still do, that it's good for business. It's you know, it's good good public image. It's a big car. I can kit all my, move all my gear around. It's, yeah. it's electric, so it's. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> but it, it's good. Like, but I remember driving back thinking, "That's not done anything. No. Like, that's not fulfilled anything." Um, so yeah. so now it is but if I get a comment on a YouTube video and we've had this a lot recently with some of the projects we've been doing like mm. this helped me like I can't believe this or someone just buy the t-shirt when someone bought a t-shirt it's yeah. like you're going you're basically saying that I support what you're doing mm. like that's to me like that's yeah. everything I'd swap that for the call yeah. you know yeah. instantly um, but the, the materialism comes from my dad so right. My, and I don't I don't say it in a bad way because I think the combination of my mum and my dad made a per, like this perfect situation mm. for me. But my my dad, he, he wasn't in our lives. But if he he was like little drips and drabs. If he was in my life, mm. he'd be there with like fifty k cash. Right. So he was, a, he was a businessman and a dodgy guy. Right. So he'd drive nice cars uh -huh. and have lots of cash. Okay. Now we didn't get to see any of it. Right. But like in in terms of like here, take some of that, buy buy yourself something. It, but it. I remember one time he came to the house and we, this ha like the, to this the it's a nice house but this it's a it's a small house semi detached mm. you know like plaster falling off the wall hadn't been decorated, right. um, and he comes in and this tiny little kitchen table just before he was about to have dinner and he gets his carrier bag he dumps it on the table and it's just full of money like there's cash everywhere, and he's like look at that look at all that money and I'm like looking at like fucking hell and he goes shoves it back in the bag, and just goes off and like he had no there's no awareness for him he wasn't doing it for any reason but it started to really spark stuff in my mind like it felt almost so attainable to me mm. I could have that that amount of money right um, and he used to talk about like nice cars he used to have a nice car and so like as a kid we always used to talk about I'm gonna have a mansion uh, and my dad would come around and be like we'll put a pool here it's just not yeah. absolute not it's like we'll put a pool here we'll dig a pool out here for you guys and we'll <laughs> a barbecue area here and it's like he's it, looking at like mud yeah. <laughs> in the yeah. we're in the middle of a council estate yeah, it's like, yeah. there's no need for a pool to be put in MTV clubs yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. and it was like that and yeah. uh, so I, I still do have that yeah, yeah. aspiration for like I mean I say, say like we want to buy a, a warehouse a, a Mullingborough studio in the States mm. and we want to be worldwide and global so I want that to be nice and I mm. want it but if I lose my material goods I'm happy mm. if I can still make my videos and yeah. I can still help inspire people. I'm genuinely happy. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, the got. I think as well is when I flick that switch.
from the goal was no longer money. Yeah. In a funny way, it happened. It yeah, was yeah, so yeah. strange. Like when you stop focusing on it in some ways, mm. it started to flow a lot easier. Definitely. Um, but your goal cannot be cash. Mm. It can be. It can be a product of what you're trying to achieve, but it can't be cash. Like yeah. it just. It just makes it so difficult. But there's no longevity in it. Yeah, you know, like, it's just not going to happen. Man. You can have ten grand, you can spend it like that. You exactly, can have a million yeah. pounds, spend it like that. It doesn't. It and doesn't. what's the diff? When you start to get to like, what's the difference between five million and ten million? Yeah. Like it, it starts. I know it's double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it starts to like. It starts to diminish that you know level of success. A hundred million versus five hundred million is like, yeah. what are you going to do? Unless you're doing. But if your goal was to do great things. Then the hundred million to the five hundred million is really important. Like there's a there's a big reason, but the factor, the driving factor was that you were trying to do good things yeah. versus make an extra four hundred million. Yeah. yeah. And, and what can you do with cash? All you can do is burn up hole in your pocket. Yeah. And you're yeah. like you're buying, you're buying. It's, it's, you're just buying for the sake of it. Aren't you? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, I was thinking yes a couple of days ago about it. Like all I'm doing is like I'm giving my cash. For something else that's just basically cash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. I'm not any better, really. It's mm. just okay. We need to have things and stuff, like you say, to do business and all the rest of it. But yeah, I think if your main goal is just to be a multi-millionaire, mm. it's quite a lonely place and quite a yeah. It can be quite toxic. Um, yeah, man. I, I don't. Um, but see, where you're, I, I've always wondered with your inspire change. That's your motto, your mantra, whatever. Do you feel pressure to do that? Like to, like because I know the the people up here in mm. the Highlands now. Since you've come up, they've really bought into it and they love your videos. And it's like that inspired change. People really grabbed it. Mm. Like it must. I I would feel a bit of pressure. Like I'm this guy that that says inspire change. I've got to live by it. I've got to do it. You know. So if you're having a bad day, you're like, oh, I just want to go out in the bevy or want to yeah. go and do whatever. Like. I, you know, I lead my, I, I do live my lifestyle fairly to the point where I'm like, I'm happy for someone to have an intimate look into that, mm, and like, mm. and they could pick apart like, well, what was this when you did this? That wasn't inspiring change, mm. or what? I'm fairly confident that majority of my time I, I spend it like leading the way I like leading by example. Mm. Um, but there are moments like so, so context is a big thing, so I think it's good to talk about certain things like. If I like over this Christmas period, like there was a point where the grief really hit me, and I was I was in bed all day crying, mm. like it absolutely and it ruined me. Mm. And it's like, but I'm happy to talk about that. I'm yeah. happy to say to people, like you know, you're gonna have these moments, and it, it does happen. Mm. Um, I think the pressure comes in when it's like the the business element of it is the YouTube, and we we have quite a few YouTube channels, mm. and all of them are, are really successful, and all of them inspire change. So there's no pressure for me right now because the team's smashing it. It's going well. When when shit starts to hit the fan a little bit, that's when it gets a little bit more like, we need to pull this off. Mm. Um, but it always works out. Like, it, it always seems like, as long as you put the effort back in, it always seems to work out. Um, but now, like, we put pressure on ourselves, we're doing a documentary. So, like, mm. the next thing is to pull off this thing of being one of the biggest documentary producers in the world. Mm. So th I would say that's where... I like having that pressure on ourselves, um, but yeah, I, I don't want to let anyone down. Yeah. You know, like it's the biggest thing is to is to make sure we're do, delivering these. But I always I, I try and break it down to the simplest fo forms. Like, right, can you shoot a shot? Yeah, you can shoot a shot. Mm. If if I can't edit it and my team can't edit it, could I hire an editor? Yeah, I can hire an editor. Mm. Have I got enough funds to finish the projects that are in front of me? Yeah, I can do that. So like I'm I'm setting myself up for success. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, it's almost like I can't fail because I'm I'm putting these things in place. Um, so yeah, the the pressure would be I think when we release this film is like mm. how well is it going to be received? Yeah. Um, but like I think I can watch it and go that's going to help inspire people. If, mm. it's, if it's net good, then I'm happy. Um, obviously, I want to keep you guys happy as well but like th i think the way i live with myself is if i go if it was net good for the world that's that was mm. fine and that's that's all i can do do my best and mm. yeah i think uh yeah we do we, we do a good job at the moment yeah 100 percent. Uh, one of your best one of my favorite videos of yours was when you paid off your mum's mortgage that was a cool video that's what i was yeah. of doing it for dad but then mm. you know obviously saying about your mum when you're younger then giving her back saying she must have been well, you could see it in the video, so relieved. And again, that's giving back to someone that's been there your whole life. So that must have been for you guys as well. 
yeah. really special I think so. it was unbelievable yeah. I think again it was, we were, it was quite a fast paced part of, the, of our life I think we'd just come back from Worlds actually mm. it wasn't long after Worlds no, so like we were just getting all the edits sorted mm. that was like a that was perfect because that felt like a success as well that we'd Cho like chose you guys and yeah. that had come off well so then was really happy about that um the youtube channel was doing really well and like so we we had these documents i'd already set it up to pay my mom's mortgage off when we, when we did it and it was a goal of ours all along and uh and it was kind of i don't know like lost a little bit right. and like i remember just this new year's and like when i've been around my mom's and she's there and the house is paid off she's got yeah. no bills to worry about the house is paid off she's getting a new kitchen fitted now oh, and like nice, all these nice things nice. it's like <laughs> it hit me i was like fucking hell like how how did we that's when it's like how do we go from the 40 pounds to being able to pay mm, more, yeah, like yeah. A dr literally a dream and I get like for my mom we you know it was always the goal like yeah. there wasn't even a, i don't it wasn't like one day i'll pay a mortgage off it was kind of like that's what you're supposed to do like yeah, yeah. you know my dad had kind of screwed my mum over with the house so she was left with this massive mortgage to pay right. um, and she just would never I remember her saying one time I was like in six years time I've got to pay 130 grand or something to save the house I'm just not going to be able to do it um, so it, it just ha when it happened yeah it just it was it's just mental now, now thinking about it like and it's, there's been a bit of time it's nuts like yeah. it is mental I'm so privileged to have been in a position to be able to do that and it was me myself Luke and William who we all came together and put, put our own money into it to do it um, yeah and, I, and I, I feel blessed and fortunate yeah, to be able well. to do it I don't feel like I don't, there's not much of an ego about it because it's like she did it anyway yeah, yeah. you know like it's, it, I said that to her it's like it's only because of you yeah. like we owe you a lot more than this so I've promised her a purple tesla and, uh, and, a, and a mansion so <laughs> yeah, no, if she wants it she's not for she'd live in a shed but you know yeah. it's nice if we could provide something else but yeah it's just unbelievable yeah so class. Yeah, giving back like that's really good isn't it so it's just endless luck that kind of that feeling you know because it's your mum or she, yeah you know, it's like you love her unconditionally she's been there from day one like you said she never slept because she gave you up mm her bed for you guys it's mental yeah, yeah. it was that that happened with um when jacob died i was they took tash away and they turned the lights off and it was really horrendous like i just just seen jacob held jacob and next door there was a uh, someone giving birth and they were all celebrating oh. and i'm sat in this room with my head in my hands and i don't know how she came i can't even remember speaking to her mm. but within about 10 minutes it felt like forever but within 10 minutes my mum was there Jeez. and you know because my mum had been through it yeah. she knew exactly what to say she knew exactly how to get me through the, the mm -hmm. situation and she's she's done that for every single one of us like you know I don't think any of my brothers or sisters feel neglected by my mum yeah. she's somehow managed to make everybody feel yeah. that they were the one yeah, <laughs> yeah, special yeah. Um, so yeah like I I mean again with, similar to with Jacob like I could mm -hmm. try and move the world for my mum it still wouldn't be enough yeah. like I don't know what I could do to repay the the debt, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's um, that that debt that we were, you know, in debt to our parents. Mm. In debt for life, aren't you? Oh, jeez, man. <laughs> yeah. But you just want, like, now you just want your mum to be happy. I yeah. never want anything. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just, I've been able to be in that position now. It, it must be so nice. And even for your mum, you know, seeing how yeah, all successful and, and, you know, you guys are, she must be so proud, man. It's, it's, uh, I think it's class. Even coming to her coming to the Giants live and yeah, enjoying herself. That, that. Yeah. It's, it's nice being able to do stuff like that, you know, and taking her to treats like that. And She's massive yeah. fans of you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big I mean, shout out. Yeah. She's, uh, she's cute, man. She's, uh, yeah, it was nice. It was, um, yeah. I, I remember the Glasgow Giants live when I ran up and saw them. And yeah. That was, that was so cool seeing them. It was, uh, it was nice. So, so now with the business, you've just become kind of the head guy of the yeah. Mulligan brothers so to speak You're yeah so like we, we we rearranged the company recently so I've become CEO to to help lead the company yep. it, it's it's kind of the role that I'd always taken with the company mm, anyway mm, mm. Um, and like shout out to Luke and Will like for trusting me on the, on those kind of moves and I think it's just through effort of like me focus on those those aspects mm. Luke and Will really focus on the editing and getting mm. the, the product done and with with the company it's Luke owns a third 
William owns a third, I own a third, yeah. and we all have equal share mm. and equal say in what, what happens in a company. Mm. But I think they just give me a little bit more leeway with the business side of things and la- allow me to sort of lead a little bit more, mm. um, which has been amazing. Like yeah. it has been so, that this last four or five months have been a lot easier for me because yeah. I can just make those decisions a little bit quicker. Um, but yeah, so that's, so that's what I'm kind of doing at the moment. Um, and yeah, the biggest focus is the documentaries, like, and, and that's for all three of us. Like, just is, I think that's the thing is that, and I, you guys have done the same. Is once you've kind of conquered something, mm. and like YouTube, with YouTube can never be conquered. Like, mm. we know there's le- massive levels to it, but we feel like we've reached this level of success we're happy with, and we'll mm. try and grow it. But it's not got that exponential growth anymore. Yeah, it's time to do something scarier. And mm. like, and we yeah. was talking about it actually yesterday. Is like. You can you can get up to ten million pound business, and then you can you can sit on that business and start to be mm. secure and defensive. Yeah, but that's not going to lead to the growth that mm. got you to the ten million pound mm. business and mm. and those kind of levels. So then it's time to go. Well, how do I exponentially grow from this point on? Mm. So for us, the documentaries is where it's at. The film industry, cool, um, and it's a. I, I would say if it doesn't give you anxiety and scare you, then it's probably not a big enough goal. Like yeah. you, it, it should be a little bit should be a bit timid about it and yeah. it should be a little bit scary. I mean, so. some of the stuff you've gone through to, to film this, I mean, when you went to Mexico before, <laughs> that, that was one of the, sca- I was like, what's he doing? I mean, like me and Luke, don't even get to the final that here, you're, you've wasted your time, but that was... Drinking a beer with some random Mexican. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was good, it had fun, man. <laughs> Swimming with alligators and, uh, what was his name? Pe- you Pedro could have just chilled in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> all-inclusive resort just chilling like oh, I'm going to go yeah. swim with alligators yeah, there's and camera in his hand on his Instagram yeah. stories everything. I actually didn't realise that Cancun is supposed to be quite a dangerous off resort so I was probably yeah. and I'm walking around with my red camera it's probably a bit stupid of myself but yeah yeah I think I've heard that the <laughs> safest yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Cancun. I'm sure it's. But it was again. Is yeah. like we said. Um, like d- that, there was a, a slim opportunity to get out to worlds, mm. and it's like that's how committed I want to be to. Mm. To well, that's how committed I am. Is like I'm gonna risk. I'll risk doing that mm. with a slim chance of getting to worlds. It's like, it almost didn't happen yeah. as well. Like on the in Mexico, I got rejected by the U.S. government the first time trying to get out to <sighs> Sacramento, and then the next day, and I'm so pleased that I, that it happened. Wow. It was like a perfect kind of t- yeah. storytelling. Yeah, having fast as well because we was I was yeah. up here, wasn't I? When I think it was Big Loz yeah, and, and yeah, Liz yeah. had messaged you saying mm. if you go to Mexico for two weeks, you can get out. Yeah. And, I, and I think there was I had to fly the next day yeah, to right. to meet the two week window. <sighs> so it was like it was we drove straight back down, got my bags packed, jumped in uh, on the plane and flew out here. Yeah, to, and me- then, well, to Mexico. And Big Rudy, he came on board. Rudy came on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was and that's again another like stars aligning with Rudy. Mad. Um, so Rory did a project with you guys yeah. a few years back and yeah. then he was in like an hour's drive living in LA becoming a filmmaker like yeah. it just it was mental it yeah. worked in perfectly everything didn't it I mean it was yeah. been hard for us for a better kind of first documentary yeah. kind of Meant story be, time don't you kind see, of see in hindsight it would have been good to have it a camera on you filming it like, <laughs> behind the scenes like shit this is what I've got to do like Jordan why are you swimming in an alligator or whatever <laughs> I'll be fine yeah uh, oh it's been been a, a mad like it's journey been quick it's, you look back at it it's mm. been it's all gone a lot miles per hour and, yeah you know, we, before we've achieved, we've achieved a lot you've achieved a lot and I think it's yeah it's been been fun hasn't it very very fun well, I mean we, like, ba- we do bounce off each other mm. when we first came up there was the tiniest little shelf in the gym now yeah. the gym wasn't even built mm. oh, yeah. and it was like maybe like 50 t-shirts stacked yeah. up and it's like and now sitting in this building mm. with the merchandise it's just like I, I get like massive fulfillment coming up here and seeing you guys train and run the mm. business and stuff like it just inspires the shit out of us mm. and the whole the whole company like I'll go back and I'll say look this is what they're doing <laughs> like if, if they've done that in this period of time, we can do that in this period of time. It's like, uh, so those achievements and like, mm. we'll talk, what was it, exposure? Yeah. Exposure to someone else's success and exposure to what they're doing and the level yeah. that they're doing at. Um, it's class, it's, it's better to right back at you because I mean, like you say, when, when you first came up, we didn't really have any say when it was just kind of quite sporadic with us. Then we're talking to you about it and you're like, like just go for it you know that growth will be exponential and it'll just it'll happen so then 
thankfully Shywin came on board, he agreed. Um, I had to pay him about a million pound a year. <laughs> uh, and then that, like, so your inspire change, like that's the reason why we are where we are, you know. And if you didn't tell us, we'd have probably just kept Simon part time for a, a long time. Huh? Yeah. I mean, no, it's, it's like a domino effect, you know. Mm. We we'll listen to you, then speak to Simon. Simon's, you know, got the job nailed, and then it's just, it just mm. everything falls into place. But like you said, you know, you have to have that that risk factor. You know, yeah. you've got a ten million pound business. It's just going there. You're not really growing, but then that same risk factor when you gave up your job at forty pound a day. Mm. It's still the same. You yeah, know, it's yeah, just, yeah. Okay, yeah. The, the money's. But if you take the money away, the risk is still the same. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. going, you're going all in. So, I think that's that's mad. You know, that's something. Again, I'm buzzing about because I'm like, yeah, what, what is the risk? Okay, we can lose it all, but we've done it, done it before. We can do it again. Do it again. Yeah, that's what you say, yeah. yeah. So just as exciting to do it all over again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might not be, it might not work, but we just keep trying, keep trying, and you know. I think we're both very aligned. We all are, you know, w with with each other. You know mm. that kind of that drive, that passion, that wanting to help people. And yeah, I think it's um, we're on the same mindset. I said money's not our biggest motivation. It's yeah, doing what we love is, and we putting everything into it, and that's yeah. what makes it easier. You know, like mm. filming, strong on business. That's what everyone thrives off, and that you know, they can see that we thrive off mm. it. You guys thrive off filmmaking. Yeah. If it was money, you'd sit back and go. Yeah, I'm exactly. not putting. I'm not doing this. You know, and I'm not going to go do, yeah. risk mm. going to Mexico, and you know they can just do it themselves and stuff. You know. Yeah, so, well, so. I, I think the pursuit of it is the biggest thing. Like mm. the journey. Like mm. that's what that's what makes you happy. Jeez, yeah. But um, I think, uh, yeah, I think all of us are like that. And it's like the the money isn't a factor. It's some some people it is. Like mm. some people are happy to rest on that and and to have that. But I, I actually think, I think all of us here, like like including William and Luke as well, mm. is like. Adversity is one of them things that, like, I actually seek almost. Yeah, now. yeah definitely, like, definitely. It's, it's easy. When, when I say it's easy, but when you're starting, adversity is genuine. Like you, mm. yeah, you're genuinely facing like starting strongman for the first time, going to a competition, like the nerves that you're gonna have, um, not being as strong as you want to be. Like mm. same with business, like all these things that you don't know and you have to find out. Like they're they're there, they're laid out. But when you get to a certain level of success, then you need to start seeking mm. adversity and finding it in it, and that's. I think that's where it's difficult because then it is like, do I want to risk? Uh, you know, there's a, there's a price to pay. Like, do I want to risk it? Um, I think, I mean, you two especially stay in the mindset of all day long. Like, we're mm. going to keep putting it, put a name on the line, put ourselves on the line. Mm. Um, I'm yeah. motivated to build a legacy, aren't we? So exactly, yeah. And you want to keep going until... And you've done a good job, though, so uh, far. <laughs> it's not yeah. gone bad, but like... Some people say, right, the the signs in your town now have your name That's on it. That's a legacy, they say. But yeah, let's go more. sit down and, you know, oh. we, we're, we're all right now, we've finished it. But it's like... Oh. You want those signs all over the world. That's what you want. Yeah, you just keep raising the stuff, ball. Yeah. Yeah. But, you, but then again, like you said, you know, that exposure to success. Mm. Like, you look at, like, Gymshark or yeah. know, Amazon. You know, all these massive companies. Like, we're literally... And same with you guys. We're just scratching the surface. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's why it's so important to have that exposure. And it was one of your videos that you were talking about, and that really stuck with me. Mm. Um, well, ben that, Francis' video was very motivational, mm. wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, it, th that, that whole visit really, really helped us. Because mm. it was like, we... So we had, we had the, the, the Mulligan Studio, and I remember yeah. when we bought it, it was like, in a prime location, like in terms of Nottingham City Centre, like everyone who I know and my family knows drives that route right, past okay. the building. It's on the main road of Nottingham. Right. So like they're gonna, and I was really proud that everyone's gonna be driving past Mulligan and they're gonna know that yeah. that's us and we've made it. And it says Mulligan Brothers on the building. It's like the biggest colourful building yeah. in, in the city, so everyone can see it. <laughs> and I remember thinking at one point I was, I was like, yeah, we've done it, we did it. And then I went to Ben Francis. So I was like, nah, mate, you're fucking <laughs> no way. You yeah. you're like a shrimp. Like, yeah. You know. <laughs> And it's it's taking it to these next levels, and I th that's one thing I think is really good is if if your goal is gym shot, mm. then there's so much room for growth. Mm -hmm. I if I come in on merchandise and I say, and this is no, nothing against you guys, if my, if I come in and my goal is to be the Stoltman brothers, which it is, mm. I'm gonna fall from them heights. I'm not gonna if that's my my, yeah, my ceiling. Course. If my ceiling was gym shot like it is for you guys. I'd probably have more growth. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. And it's. I think if you can surround yourself with those kind of people who, or, or that kind of exposure, mm. um, you 
you take your perception of what you're trying to achieve changes so drastically. Big time, man. It's, yeah, uh, it's those hatred is dizzy, man. It's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's mad. And to get there, you know, you need that team. You know, it's not yeah, just yeah, you yeah. that you can do that. Oh yeah, you can guide it. But like, since we've started working together, your business, the employees have grown mm. quite a lot. I want, I just want more. Yeah. Like, I know, like when you get that right employee, and we've got a great team building yeah. right now. Um, yeah, it just changes it. I always say. I say I need to find a Simon. Like I do. <laughs> I'm always saying I need to find Everyone a Simon. Wants a Simon Everyone you know? wants a Simon in their life. Yeah, so You've got like, the original, so you know what can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like people are running and I'll come back. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's finding people who are passionate about what they're doing mm. and who've got that kind of uh, ingenuity and like willing to like free think for themselves yeah. and just get the job done. Yeah. And, you, and I used, I did genuinely used to think about like, on my own back self made like when I ran the gym I was like self made get yeah. it on you can do this all yourself it's like the moment you start introducing people it's yeah. like it starts to be like magic yeah. like, hold on a sec like I don't have to do that anymore yeah. like, this guy's going to do it and do a better job it's mad yeah it's crazy but then it kind of comes from youth or you have to have that that way about you you know to inspire people yeah. and to like show them your vision like what is your vision if your vision is like when Simon came on for us at, at the time it was just the office and the gym and it's like there has to be more mm. you know so you've got to have that like three year goal whatever. yeah yeah um, and that's what you're saying about going out to LA that's yeah that sounds exciting for you know going to LA and yeah. then doing that and you know so it's it all not just start, starts with you but obviously with the, the team like with Luke um, William yourself and I think that's what's great is because we've seen that firsthand mm. because when you come up it's like we see your studio like, mm. fuck that's class man right we need to get something and then our vision grows and then we watch your motivational videos then it grows even more and so uh, John so we five off each other don't you mm. and yeah I, and I'll be as successful as each other that's 100% and like yeah. I, I do I do believe that like if we buy a place in LA like in some ways I'm, I do I do that to compete almost with you two yeah. like in the, in the in the friendliest way yeah, possible yeah, of course, like, man. I want you two to go fucking bastard like yeah. oh sh I'm not allowed to swear am I on it or you can say or you can be buzzing for you as well because it's like yeah and, but, oh, it's like and buzz, exa yeah. exactly but I, I know that'll push you you're the type of people yeah. that are gonna yeah strive let's do one like, step well, hold on up, a second man. if George's done it yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll do a bigger one yeah. <laughs> and it is like that it's like yeah. so yeah I, and I, I think I could, I come here and I, every single time I come here now I walk into the merchandise mm. and I go right how am I, how am I going to get here uh. like, how am I going to do this and like in, in some ways I'm like I want to get as big as this like I want to get to these levels as well mm. um, so there is it, for me especially like I, I put some sort of competitiveness on it in a way mm. and like and it's, it's known where to do that as well like I don't go into the gym when you're log lifting and <laughs> you're doing stones and go oh man I need to get up to this level uh, like it's just that's you know it's not I my mean, my, geez, my from the goals. first first YouTube video we did with you and Strom and Tanai you're nearly at that level <laughs> oh my god yeah, there's think, a new king of stones yeah. like, I know it's <laughs> like taking over the business taking over the gym <laughs> yeah but that's even your merchandise, even like, you know, you, you, you weren't as big in merchandise mm, before you started. Now you're yeah. like growing the t-shirts are really nice to t-shirts. You know, your merchandise stuff's doing good and it's cool just to have those wee sayings on it as well. And, yeah. you know, I like the t-shirts and I think a lot of people are liking them as well. And it was thanks to you growing the t-shirts. Yeah, That's what well, I'm saying. Yeah. And it's like, thanks to you as well. We built the YouTube. We're helping you build the merchandise. So like I said, we thrive off each mm -hmm. other, which is the best thing you can do you know be class one day if we both had like a place out in America next yeah. door to each other yeah it'd be good and then like Stoltman it just, and just keeps growing the other yeah. way <laughs> we'd be the right. skyline of America yeah, yeah. Like, like 40, 40 floor or whatever <laughs> and take it to yeah. Dubai and it all there. emptied yeah. Yeah. there's no one there but it's just a little bit bigger than yours yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah man it's um, it's it's amazing to see the possibilities and um, we're just yeah, super excited for the documentary. I'm really looking really forward to this documentary, especially how everything's happened in it, you know, yeah. like, I mean, perfect with the World Straws Man and everything like that as well, and to tell the story, it's going to be mm. cool. I mean, I think a lot of people are excited. Yeah, I, I hope so. The documentary is like, um, well, it, we, it's in the edit now, mm. but the story is, I mean, the story's happened, mm. but the way in which we're going to deliver that, I'm so excited for people to see, and, and I think, I, I think because you're on YouTube and Instagram, people go, "Oh, I know what I know what's happened." They see they see World's Strongest Man. I know what's happened. It's like there's so much stuff that they just mm. do not know what's yeah. going on in the background. It's like when we captured that, like mm. you know, I think 
At, at the moment, we're still filming, mm. um, but the the pr the main filming for the for the, the first doc's done. It's like we was up here like I think it was like a week of every month we would come up, mm. so that like, we captured a quarter of and we'd film everything, which was stupid because it's taken a long time to edit. But <laughs> we'd film everything, yeah. and it's like we captured all those moments, and you know, there's some really interesting stuff. I just I don't think people under like know what's happened in your guys' lives and like the way your heads are working and stuff. Yeah. It's like that doesn't they just don't see that. So I mean, no. I'm glad that that's the case because uh, we're going to be able to share that. And big shout out to you two for allowing us to pretty oh, much share it's... everything. No, we're buzzing with it. Can't wait. And then are we allowed to talk about the next. Yeah, we can start talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're already in the process of a documentary number two. I don't know. Right, number uh, number so, two. Number two. Number two. So that's the way you're talking about that's going to be even more I think, yeah. interesting as so well. like the first film is like follows the perfect journey mm. of, of the story of winning World's Strongest Man but the next one's like a, a, like an intimate look into the mind and the mindset of it all mm. um, I can't say too much because we're still obviously between yeah, us yeah. all we're still lining stuff up but we, we, we are if people were asking why are we still filming some of it's for pickup shots for the first film yeah. but a lot of it is we're going to follow for the next year maybe a little bit longer to yeah, follow this journey. And then we'll do another one after we yeah. we'll get rid we'll of never stop. We'll never <laughs> yeah, stop. Well, yeah. well, well, I yeah. was crying when they said the first one was over. I was like, I'm not going to see them again. <laughs> it's um, it's going to be cool, man. It's, I just can't wait for people to watch it mm. because I think it's... You, we were talking yesterday about, you know, with like with Tom and his journey and mm. like, my health, my mental health and all the rest of it. If people can watch it and like... It's, it's just I think it's going to be really good because people yeah. will go into our heads and be like wow that's what Tom thinks that's what Luke thinks and definitely really think oh, Jesus is what but a, what a whole a whole year like a, a, a lot's I, both of you a lot's mm. changed unfortunately the ending of the podcast just got cut off so we're going to do a little outro now so special thanks to Mr Jordan Mulligan the most inspiring man I've ever met apart from Big Tommy of course <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Hope you enjoyed uh, podcast number two. We will try and keep them nice and uh, consistent. So thank you for watching. Big Tommy. Stay safe, smile and stay spicy. And don't forget to ring that little bell. Ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling -a -ling. <laughs>